Okay, more low-level technical fun. I still have my cow with my moo count. I have Betsy, I have Georgie. Betsy's moo count is 9. Georgie's moo count is 3. So on and so forth. Let me draw, for the probably hundredth time, the stack in the heap. All right, and we've learned about value types and reference types. If you have skipped those videos, go back and watch them. Because I'm going to come here and say struct instead of class. And by now you know what that means. It means I can instantiate these objects, but new no longer goes out to the heap to instantiate the object. New just simply says, hey, zero out all the bits inside of this object. But this object actually resides on the stack. So here's Betsy. Okay, Betsy has a 32-bit integer in there, moo count, like so. And then Georgie, again, I believe we used red for Georgie. Here's Georgie, and he has a moo count as well. Now, from the previous video, you should be scratching your head saying, uh, Jamie, didn't you just show me that each object has a sync block index and a type object pointer? Why are you only drawing the room here for the 32-bit and what's going on here. Well, remember, I just changed this to a struct. It's no longer a class. All right? it, is, it is the actual object. All right? In fact, everything the compiler knows about a struct or a value type is true. The compile time type is always identical to the runtime type. Key concept with struct slash value type. The compile time type is always identical to the runtime type. Right? There's no references or polymorphism going on here. Remember, structs are always sealed. What the compiler knows is identical to the, what the runtime knows. So we no longer need that type object pointer for the runtime to determine whether a cast is OK or not, or for us to do some reflections, because all that can be determined at compile time by the compiler. So no, in the case of value types, we don't have a type object pointer, nor do we have a sync block index, because sync block index only applies to reference types, not value types. Now I can actually prove this to you. Let me erase that. I'm going to hit F10. Again, let's look at RAM, but this time, instead of looking at the heap, we need to look at the, the stack, correct? So the way I get the address of the stack in memory is uh, debug, Windows registers again, and generally it would be the value of the stack pointer. That's what SP stands for here. It would generally be this value, but uh, actually to get the precise location, uh, I just know something about activation context and and call stacks and stack frames and that sort of thing. And we, I know that the stack pointer is copied into the base pointer and blah blah blah. Don't worry about it. Let me copy the value in the base pointer, and then I need to look at the offsets here. Again, I have to kind of. Sorry for all the side scrolling here. F10. Look at this. In fact, let me just get rid of this. Well, I'll just take it down below. This XOR, that's how you zero out some memory, and it's zeroing out EDX. And then it's storing that value. Notice EDX here is zeroed out. Uh, it's storing that resulting zero out to where uh, our instance of our cow is stored at the base pointer minus 3C and hex. So. Again, here's 0x, control V, that's my base pointer address, my BP. And then I'm going to minus 0x for hexadecimal number, 3c. Okay, I find it interesting they do 3c, but then they suffix h with hex here, but then up here I have to prefix with 0x, but whatever. Enter, and let's just watch, watch what happens here. I'm going to say move count gets 9, which moves into that exact same address, the value 9. So we should see a 9 show up here. Very good. And then where do you think Georgie's going to end up? Our stack is growing this way. All right. And Georgie is the next object on the stack here. You see Georgie here? So we make Georgie. We zero out Georgie, which is kind of unnecessary. It was already zero. And then Georgie's moo count is 3. So here is Betsy's moo count. Here's Georgie's moo count. Notice they are right next to each other. These are four byte groups that I'm doing here. So here's an int. Here's an int, or in D word, as we call it in low level land, but don't stress that. These are the integers for both Betsy and Georgie, and they're right next to each other. Okay, there's no type object pointer or sync block index in this case. 
All right, but 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 <laughs> but yeah. What if I call Betsy dot get type? All right, get type requires a type object pointer to be out on the heap. All right, but I'm calling get type on a value type or a struct that's on the stack. It doesn't have a type object pointer as I showed in the previous videos. So how is this going to get resolved? Any ideas? Well, how can I turn a value type into a reference type? We've seen how to do that in previous videos. Any idea? Do you remember how to do that? In order to get that type object pointer, I need to turn my value type into a reference type. Remember how to do that? It has something to do with a sport. Muhammad Ali boxing. Very good. When we call get type, the runtime will actually box this value. So we don't end up actually calling get type on the Betsy object. Instead, we end up calling get type on a boxed object, which then creates the type object pointer and that sort of thing. I can actually prove that happens. I'm going to save this file and bring up the reflector. Here is my command prompt. If you remember, I made this C batch file, which will compile this one little file by itself and then give me the .NET reflector. So let's do that. Reflector main class .exe main class. There we go. Let's look in here. Uh, let's find our main right there. And you can see the C sharp compiled like so. But what if I say, hey, show me the show me the IL. Show me the intermediate language. This isn't the low level CPU code. This is the .NET byte instructions, if you would. And oh, look at this. What do we see here? Box cow and then call get type. All right, so our one dot get type call causes us to box the cow, and then now get type can go get the type object pointer for that boxed instance of an object instead of the one that's actually sitting on the stack. So it's kind of deceiving. We're saying Betsy dot get type, but really we're not invoking get type on Betsy. We're invoking get type on a boxed copy of Betsy out on the heap. Anyway.